I'm standing here on Woodward Avenue, and in a few short hours, this street is going to be buzzing with 20 to 30,000 cars, antique hot rods, mixed cars of all kinds, as we celebrate the 18th annual Woodward Dream Cruise. And on either side of this street will be a million spectators watching this wonderful parade of cars in this beautiful day. And behind me here is Woodward Camera, and they're going to be honoring veterans for the day. And the veterans will come in and they were going to be having some wonderful times and renewing their, their relationships with their veterans. All branches of services are going to be here and we're going to have a wonderful time thanking America's veterans. <laughs> I'm with Chris Cosley, president of the Michigan Military and Technical Historical Society, who's brought this wonderful Jeep, 1942 Jeep, to the Woodward Dream Cruise. Chris, uh, did you restore this? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, we bought it in 2003 off of eBay, and it took us until about 2007 to restore it completely. Do you know how many Jeeps they built in the war? Uh, somewhere around half a million. Half a million Jeeps, I, and a few of them like this are still in existence. Yeah, now tell us about the museum, how, where is it? Uh, how, is it open all year round? Our museum is uh, on Stevens near Grasher, just east of Grasher. Uh, we are open right now Saturdays 10 to 5, Sundays 12 to 5, and the focus of our museum is to tell the story of Michigan's contribution to 20th century conflict. Uh, we talk about Michigan-made products and Michigan units and veterans from World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Cold War, and we even have some things from the global war on terror. You know what's interesting in looking at this Jeep here is how simple the dashboard is compared to today's cars. There is no airbags, there is no air conditioning, and I also noticed, Chris, on the dashboard, it looks like an original Pepsi-Cola bottle opener. Is that what that is? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it was actually a fairly common modification that was done in the field. Uh, every, both Coke and Pepsi sent uh, cases of their beverages to the soldiers in, in Europe and, and the Pacific, and each case would contain one bottle opener. And you, they turn up uh, fairly regularly on military vehicles. I, I've had some World War II vets that have ridden with me in this Jeep that that laugh about the bottle opener. They usually point, it's one of the things they point out. And they, they often point out to me that, it, that it, it was never actually used to open soft drinks. You mean it was some other kind of beverage? Uh, usually adult beverages, from what I get. <laughs> really today's DAR. Today's DAR is an action. We're not sitting home anymore. We're not uh, just playing bridge. We're out there in the community and we are trying to do a good job. We go into the schools. We give constitutions to all the children. We hope with the community responds by allowing us to put posters in our civic buildings to remind everybody about our most precious document, the Constitution. The DAR also sponsors several schools, for instance, one in Appalachia, where the children are given a chance at a better education. We provide them with literature, we provide them with uh, supplies for school, clothing. We do whatever we can, whatever the school needs, we supply these to the schools. We provide uh, coats for the uh, young officers who go to the cemetery and help with the internments. When it's cold out, they have a nice warm coat to wear. The Piety Hill chapter has uh, co-sponsored many of these projects along with other chapters in the community. 
I'm talking to Gary Kuhn from the Patriot Guard Writers, uh, an officer with that organization. Gary, tell us more about this organization. We're learning about it, but we'd like to know more. Yeah, this uh, organization started for the uh, basically the benefit of our uh, military families and the veterans, and basically just to show honor and respect to the families and make sure that uh, if there are anybody uninvited guests at funerals and uh, cemeteries, we uh, make sure that we keep uh, a distance between those folks and um, and the families. Well, I notice here on Woodward Avenue you have a lot of your members with motorcycles. you have to have a motorcycle to belong to it? No, you don't. A lot of folks do, but it, it's open to anyone that just wants to show respect to uh, veterans and their families. You do not have to ride at, uh, at all. Patriot Guard Riders, you have a website they could go to? Yes, our, our website, we have a national website, which is patriotguard.org, and our Michigan website is uh, patriotguardmi.org. How many uh, members do you have here in the state of Michigan? Uh, we're somewhere probably in the neighborhood of uh, probably five to 6,000 members just in Michigan. Well, that's interesting. Is it growing? Do you have it any is, more? It is absolutely growing. We're adding, actually, I just checked my email before we started, and we had uh, 10 new members that had introduced themselves. So well, it's, That's uh, wonderful. We're so glad you're here with us today, and uh, thank you for serving us the way you do in your organization. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome. I'm with Rick Anderson, director of the Great Lakes Military Cemetery, a beautiful place uh, in Holly, Michigan. Uh, I was up there a few years ago for an internment for a friend of ours, and it's, it's just a gorgeous place. Rick, tell us more about it. Well, Great Lakes National Cemetery is only one of 131 national cemeteries that we have. Uh, we were dedicated in 2007. Our actual like, groundbreaking was in 2004 and I started our burials in 2005. Uh, since then we've buried about 15,400 of our nation's veterans and eligible dependents. Uh, to be eligible for burial in a national cemetery, a veteran had to have served on active duty for other than training purposes and been discharged other than dishonorably. Well, how do people get connected with you and how do they learn more about it? Uh, is there any charge for it? But absolutely no charge for what we do inside the cemetery. We provide the grave, the opening, closing, perpetual care, double depth concrete grave liner for the veterans, for the veteran and the spouse. Uh, there's no, no cost for anything once you come through our gates. Rick, I noticed when I was up there in September of that year, uh, an MIA POW uh, uh, area. It, tell us about that. The uh, Vietnam Veterans uh, Chapter 175 placed a POW MIA Memorial Mo Monument uh, at Great Lakes on our Memorial Walkway a few years ago and each year now uh, in commemoration of our POWs and those that are still missing in action we have a ceremony held on the uh, Saturday after POW MIA Recognition Day uh, as proclaimed by the President so it's it's quite a, an honor for us to host that that program and have the uh, members of the military, the VFW, uh, American Legion, uh, and especially our Vietnam veterans come out and remember those that are missing. I'm talking with Don Woodworth, retired United States Marine Corps Chief Warrant Officer. Don, why are you here today? And tell us about this program you're involved in. Uh, we're here today uh, because the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution invited us to come and uh, help to present our display and what we're doing and basically uh, we have a all-volunteer program called BOOTS which stands for Boxes to Our Overseas Troops and we have over a hundred volunteers that work with us raising funds, packing boxes, purchasing and we've sent over 1,000 boxes to our overseas troops in Afghanistan. What are some of the items that you put in the boxes? Well, it's strange that you ask that because uh, we do about 35% women armed forces personnel. Really? And so uh, we make a combination of lotions and uh, things for the ladies, body wash, etc. And then we put kind of dried foods like beef jerky and uh, a lot of the male forces and the female forces both want wet wipes because they get into the field, and you might chuckle about that, but they get into the field and they have no water, and uh, to stay clean and sanitary, they use those wet wipes. So that's one of the things we send them. How do you distinguish the male boxes from the female boxes? Simply with a uh, label when we pack the boxes, and uh, 
we had one older gentleman that was packing boxes and we told him to pack the ladies boxes and he says I'm not gonna pack lady boxes <laughs> so uh, we said well you know what's in there so go ahead and pack it <laughs> how long does it take by the time the boxes are packed to when they get into the field about six weeks six weeks and that, are they by destination to an individual yes. or an organization well we do both we do uh, a list of individuals and their uh, uh, unit that they are in and then we send boxes to the chaplains and sometimes the commanders for them to distribute distribute where the need is needed. Looking at this wonderful looking t-shirt here Don that says boots now what does that mean again? Boxes to our overseas troops we only send boxes overseas we don't send them in the US continental limits. It's a wonderful program where, how, where did it begin and when did it begin? It began when uh, we lost our grandson Marine Captain Peterson in Iraq in 2006 and uh, he had boxes that the family sent. They called us and asked him what to do with and we said leave them there. And so from that time on we took up a program of sending the boxes overseas. It's a wonderful program. We thank you for your service and this great program you're putting together. Boots, we love it. Thank you, sir. Hi, this is Elizabeth Widener. My family owns Woodward Camera and we are very proud to have the veterans with us today co-sponsored with the Daughters of the American Revolution. It's only halfway through the day and we've already given out 5,000 flags in honor of veterans and everybody proud to be an American. My family really appreciates all the hard work that our service men and women do all over the world. Woodward Dream Cruise number 18, welcome cruisers. Have fun today, the weather is perfect. Enjoy yourself, be safe.